this morning we've seen the theme or the topic Punch conscience that's the topic anyone that had once lived that life and come to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior immediately there is an atonement of sin and the sin will be forgiven or remitted and once it's remitted that one assess God's presence and in that God's presence he assess all that God is and he walk in the midst of that strength it's my prayer that our conscience will be clean will be pushed in the name of Jesus for instance you see somebody that has offended you and you find it difficult to forgive the person seeing the person coming from afar your mind is telling you because you have a polluted heart a conscience against that person turn this way, don't go that way so you will not cross your path because when you cross the path either you remember with anger what the person did or you remember with despising the person not minding the person all of it, they are pollutions of the heart and Jesus In order for the thought, in order for the imagination, in order for the wishes of the heart, your inside, not to be formed or carried away by the life of those influences, and all at once is cut off. You look at yourself. All things are passing away. Behold, all things becomes new. The life I used to live, I lived in the world. Now, all things are passed away. New life, I start. What happens when our conscience is purged? We are completely free to go into the most holy place. We are completely free to go into the most holy place. Don't let the accuser of the brethren remind you of the sin you committed some years back when you have not given your life to Christ. The moment you have given your life to Christ, just like it happened to Paul, his sins were remitted. Those things had no hold over him again. comfort me. You used to enjoy their favor and not everybody turns against you. Even for even life turns against you. Hold on tight. Shedrach, Meshach, Abednego, they saw. He said, even if the Lord will not deliver them, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. They refuse to budge. Even if they are going to throw you into the prison, even if they are going to make you to deny Jesus, refuse it. Hold on tight to the new faith, new life you've gotten. If not, this new life would have been overtaken by the flesh or by the world. And Jesus answered in Matthew chapter 4 when the devil came asking him, This is the world and the glory I've been given to me. If you just can bow down, I will give it to whoever I want. Jesus looked at him and said, no, there's no glory here. I want to plead with you. Even when you are in a relationship, you are under pressure to secure a man. You are under pressure to, to make sure you get along with everybody. Don't compromise your faith. You know, before you told the lie, your conscience pricked you, but you just didn't listen. 
before you fell into that sin, before the things happened, you have been warned. But you just refused to. Why? You refused to listen to your conscience. But a poor conscience, we have a very soft heart. I won't do this. He will see life from the other opposite. If we meet with one another, choir or prayer bound, look at this brother. And because the episode and the, uh, uh, the, the, the testing, the, the discussions, don't be discussing and talking ill. For instance, as you are talking, the brother just came in between you. Ah, how are you? We just mention your name. Oh, ah, you must be a wonderful brother. And your conscience is telling you, is it true? What you are saying, is it true? Why don't you be open? Why don't you be sincere? Why don't you be truthful? So we live our life very, very open, sincere, straightforward. Hello, when you have a posh conscience, when you see a sister, you will know you will see her as a sister to be helped, not be taken advantage of. When you see a businessman who is prospering, you will not see how, what will I say to get some money from him? But how can I help him? Anything you do that brings judgment, stay off from it. Let's be very sensitive to our conscience. Let's make sure that the blood that has been released on the cross, that leads to the cleansing of our conscience, is not smuggled again. Our heart is not smuggled again into wrong things subject to the flesh subject to worldliness subject to the things or worries of this life let's not allow it can you remember what happened to Elijah he was warned by Jezebel by this time tomorrow Elijah's heart sank he said Lord take my life ha God told him he said I'm the only prophet remaining that no bow down to bow. God today, a house of thousands that have no bow down. He now saw that he was overrating himself. Please don't let your mind become too small to rate yourself by the values of this world. The value of this world have expiring date. One day, everything will come past. But your life in God, when ends your life starts. I don't know whether you have a free conscience, a posh conscience. If you don't, don't worry. The Paul didn't hear this kind of message to prepare his mind. This is the time to say, Lord Jesus, I knew what you did on the cross. It is for me, not for yourself. You went with the blood into the holies in heavens says, this is a blood that he is under. Can you remember what happened in Egypt? Genesis 12, I mean, Exodus 12. When everyone behind the blood, they were certain of their life. That is the strength we carry. Don't let the fears of this world rubbish you to become too small in your eyes to say, if I don't do this, that may become the end of my life. Friend, if you don't do it, that's just a starting point of your life. Who wants to start a new life? A new life will be open to us. We must go in and we become the experience.